Hello and welcome to another episode of the Middle Earth Play by Mail fan channel. What I'm wanting to look at today is another region guide, this time looking at Harandor and Umbar. Now, Harandor, if you're into the lore, uh, basically means Southland. Har, H A R, from Sindarin, roughly equating to South, and Dor, meaning land, just as it does with Gondor and Mordor. Umbar, I don't know what that means, whether it comes from Sindarin or uh, Numenorian, but it probably means dangerous scurvy pirates, because that's kind of what they are. Now, the area that I'll be focusing on today is this area in the south. So if you take the uh, river Anduin here as it comes and discharges into the sea, and anywhere south of that, going up to around about the bottom end of the mountains around Mordor, and then coming down here, compassing this little bit of, of desert here, main river Harnan going through the middle, and over this side jutting out across to the sea we have the Umbar territories. So this is the main area I'll be talking about today. In the 1650 version of the game it is home to three nations, Quiet Avenger on the Dark Servant side and two neutral sides of Haradwaith and the Corsairs. Now there are three main geographical features that really define gaming in this area. First of all, as you can see by the huge amount of this light brown colour that's around, is it is predominantly hills and rough. Secondly, as you can see from the thick blue line stretching all the way across the middle, is there is a major river, the River Harnan, which divides the area in two. And thirdly, just moving across here, it's got a lot of coastline. This is probably one of the most active areas in the game for naval activity. And I'll just talk about each of those three main features in turn. First of all, the fact that it's hills and rough means that moving around can be a bit of a challenge. Even when your army is fed, if it's an infantry army, to move from one hills and rough along to the next costs you five movement points. So if you're unfed, it's seven. So it doesn't matter whether your army is fed or not, the maximum amount an infantry army can move across hills and rough is a measly two hexes. With cavalry, they are much faster. So if they are fed, they can move uh, three points, which means that they can move, uh, without having to force march, they can move four hexes. And if they're unfed, they'll be moving at four points per turn, which means they'll only be able to move three hexes, but it's still a lot better than the infantry. As a result, when you're planning your game and being able to make some lightning strikes against the enemy, do consider cavalry as an option. Even if it's just a single small cavalry force to be jumping around, jumping in, particularly against either Quiet Avenger or uh, Harad, with these uh, fairly undefended population centres around a small, fast-moving cavalry force can do a lot of damage and the infantry just won't be able to catch up with them. The thing with the River Harnan flowing through the middle is of particular note to Harad. You effectively carve that nation into two halves. It does mean that the south of the Harnan, if you end up with a straight fight between, say, the Corsairs and Harad, Harad are going to struggle unless they get very good conveyor belt of troops being moved across the bay or across the river by ship or you get support from strong naval allies to the north, South Gondor being particularly important there. While that's hard, it does also mean that uh, it's a bit of a two-edged sword for those south of the Harnan. On the one hand, it makes it harder for enemy armies to come and attack you, particularly with the hills and the rough, because they'll have to come, if they're coming across land, over this bridge between 3333 and 3334, or if that gets blown up even further round, around the end here, over a couple of rivers, it will just take forever. So you can be fairly isolated from land attack from the north, but it also means that for you to be able to manage any sort of land attack further north, you have the same problems. So you're either going to have to ferry troops out 
across the sea, which I'll come on to in a minute, or you have to recognise that when you've dealt with the immediate threats in your area, you're going to be a much more character-focused nation in the mid to long term of the game. And so a nation such as Quiet Avenger, which is able to name emissaries at rank 40 or above, will often be one sending out uh, emissary groups to try and influence away other enemy population centres. The other thing to note is that there are quite a lot of big built up areas around here. Obviously the Havens of Umvar itself is a city, but the number of major towns in the region is above average. So if you are the Corsairs and you want to be able to support some of your allies, particularly those on the Dark Servants side, you have a plentiful supply of major towns that can be given to more fragile nations, such as the Witch King or Ice King or Dragon Lord. So if they can end up with a population centre right down here, it's a lot safer for them, it's a lot harder for the free peoples to get an army down there to try and sort it out and knock them out of the game. Now with the naval movement, obviously a lot of it will happen all around the coast, so there are one or two pinch points around along here, 2234 to 2434 up to 2533, which is where if you're going to have an interception, it's going to happen there unless your opponent decides they're going to move across open seas and take some risk that comes with that in terms of getting lost or storms. The other thing to note is there are an awful lot of harbours around, even on the island here over at Tolfalas. Now, ships can only land on shore hexes, which basically is 2632 here in the uh, Harandor area and 2237 down here in the Umbar region, or on any hex which happens to have a port or a harbour on it, for which there are quite a lot all around the outside, around there, all around there, and down here you've got them all around, all around these pop centres. So it starts off with the population centres on the coast are quite porous and ripe for naval invasion. A good strategy to do if you're wanting to play a more defensive game is to have a decent rank commander going around doing the remove harbour order, just taking out the harbours that are on the hexes which are hills rough or over here which are forest just because it will prevent naval invasion into that territory. Often it's common to remove all of the harbours for uh, Umbar so that the only way in is 2337 which you then make sure you have an army stationed at to receive any unwanted naval attention. Even with all of those harbours and ports removed, however, it is still one, just one turn sail. Let me just put a uh, Fed Coastal Navy range in from down here at Maros, all the way around the Cape, coming round up here and landing at 2632 of Haz Adri. So you can still get lots of recruitment either up here at, at 2632 or down here at 2337 and if you have a navy big enough you plonky guys on the ship and you sail them all the way round. But there are certain pinch points which can prevent this basically all the way along this section here as previously mentioned is one. If you can get a navy parked at 2038 that pretty much controls access into and out of this small inlet bay with all the um, population centres around it. One word of warning, however, when you are removing harbours and also ports, I believe the Corsairs only start with the one port, which is here at 2438. If you remove all your harbours and you just leave yourself with that port, one uh, well-placed sneaky elf with a sabotage port order can knock that port down to a harbour or even remove it totally and suddenly as Corsairs you will no longer have any capacity for building ships and in the long run that's really going to hurt you. The other thing just to note is that um, with other regions nearby if either Harad or Corsairs or both 
end up siding with the dark servants they have a made they present a major naval threat obviously to um, south gondor here or even sailing up the river anduin and coming up and helping out in the athelian area with north gondor so that's something just for the free people to be aware of usually the best way to try and counter this because north gondor south gondor and the cinder elves do start off with some pretty decent chunks of warship but ethelond here a um, cinder major town with a port is critical because the cinder have this really cute trick of being able to build ships for one third of the timber cost so just 500 timber and 1500 gold can make a warship so a common tactic is for the cinder just to be the shipwrights for the free peoples getting themselves into friendly relations with south gondor with north gondor and whoever else needs it and everyone sends timber to 2235 ethelond then turns those at the cheapest rate in the game into warships and it's very hard for quiet avenger and uh, harad and it's still pretty tricky for Corsairs, even though they can make ships at half cost with 750 timber, just to compete with that. Particularly as the Free Peoples generally will have more timber production going on. Just a couple of other geographical features to note, apart from the hills, the river and the sea, is that it's mostly a big stretch of desert right down at the south here you tend not to get very many population centers parked down here partly because they're just not the best for production and also they're pretty high temperature places in terms of climate and hot desert is not the best for producing the best stuff in the game uh, you've also got a little bit of forest around the end but it all starts out already pre-populated and the road here, of course, already mentioned, this is one way to move around much more quickly outside of the otherwise pretty slow movement rate you'll have on hills and rough. So let's take an example. Let's say you've got a really good cavalry group together at Lurga Lur. And let's see. So Fed Cavalry Army in one turn can swing around here if the bridge is still up, be up to 3333. And we'll just clear that. And so that's one turn's movement fed cavalry another you can then come up here and within two turns using the road you can be right up into osgiliath you can be across into the uh, northern territories of harad up at methir so making use of that road is really important if you're going to get around quickly particularly with cavalry so if you can park one or two population centers along the road and stick a tower on it that just puts in a speed bump to slow down your enemies fog of war is important to remember i've got it set at the moment so we can see the whole map unimpeded but let's just have a look at what some of the nations in the area can see on their map so this is the fog of war for the corsairs they can see all of the area where they are in but and all of harad starting territories but nothing really of quiet avenger if we go across and have a look at um, the Quiet Avengers view, Quiet Avenger sees all the northern side of Harad, apart from the island of Karastolfalas, and um, nothing really of the Corsairs. But their view also stretches across here and includes most of the area just south of the upper reaches of the Harnan, where it's a major river, and up by the road. So you're able to see this area round here, which no one else pretty much can, and develop that. And then let's have a look at um, Harad. Harad can see a little bit of Quiet Avenger and a little bit of the Corsairs. But this area of the Corsairs here is pretty much blind to them. And if we were to have a look at South Gondor as well, South Gondor can see the um, XX35 file across here, but nothing below. So this area here, 21 to 36, 22 to 36, that little bit of uh, forest there, and these three hexes here can only be seen by the Corsairs. So a little bit of development there, a little bit of recruiting there, that's going to happen off people's maps they're going to have to spend spells or scries to try and see what's going on 
and again we see from Harad they can't see this little area around here for Quiet Avenger so Quiet Avenger can happily develop around here and it's not seen. With Harad if Harad starts as a preset free people position which often they do they can't see over here let's have a quick check on what North Gondor can see yeah North Gondor again pretty much blind so if we just go back to Harad Harad are a little bit imperiled in that there's a little bit of territory round here so 3231 down to 3134 which they can't see and again the dark servants can put a few camps down there develop and have a foothold ready for some lightning attacks across speaking of lightning attacks across in the 1650 version of the game just talking about how the areas of Harondor and Umbar relate to other areas of the game. First of all, in terms of Mordor, uh, there's an old cavalry army under the Long Rider here. If they decide they want to slam straight into the side of Harad here, they can do that. And you need to get some pretty clever movement in, probably with some support from North Gondor to try and prevent it. So if we just have a look at the Fed Cavalry Army range, they can come down here, go all the way across, land at 2731, which is an unguarded town, or up on Methir, which they probably wouldn't do anything about, but they could wipe out the starting army. But I think if you can land at 2731 as that long rider cavalry, burn it to the ground, you can then have a number of options that you can jump onto next. Before you know it, Harrods had two of its starting towns taken down. That's 10,000 tax base plus all the production that comes from it. The other threat can also come if Cloud Lord decides to detach its cavalry and have them do the same. They can move along, hide just off map here, and again swing in and hit the northern part of Harad, while, say, Corsairs and Quiet Avenger are carving up the south of Harad. Harad, very rich, powerful nation, but it's in a bit of a precarious position if it's a preset neutral on the free people's side. In terms of production, this is one of the uh, richest areas on the map, partly because of its climate. It's mostly warm all year round with 100% production taking place, but also because the sheer flexibility that you get from the hills and rough hexes. Apart from Mithril, you can find a little bit of just about anything down here, and frequently placing camps down here will find you gold mines so you'll have a little bit of everything and good gold coming from down here which really helps you to build strong nations strong armies and to support your allies the only other area i should really mention is uh, the easterlings over to the side here on uh, the cans area of the map again if they decide that they want to send some troops across it's quite a distance but uh, if you're the Easterlings and you're deciding to go free, I would recommend a small, well-fed cavalry army. And these three areas, uh, you know, you've got a couple of villages just with a tower. You've got a town that's entirely undefended. And there's a small starting camp just with a tower. Between them, they actually provide quite a lot of gold and resources for Quiet Avenger. And if you can get in and burn three or four of those down, Quiet Avenger from its starting population centres will only have uh, Lurgalur and Vermag, both of which are much harder to take down because they're major towns with castles. But if you can come in and you can take out some of the little camps around here, that can really set the Quiet Avenger back for a few turns. And I can tell you that because it happened to me when I was playing Quiet Avenger. So, in summing up, the Harandor and Umbar regions are great regions to play in if you like economic development. They're great if you like a nation which, once you get to the mid-game, provided you get there, are a little bit further away from the, the heart of the action. You can castle up in a corner, particularly the Corsairs. They are the preeminent places to go for if you're wanting to have some naval warfare, particularly if you're wanting to join the Dark Servants and get involved in some naval warfare. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a fun area to play in. 
you can end up in some pretty long grindy attritional wars if you end up fighting against other nations in the area but uh, they can be fun. You don't quite have the free-flowing, broad, open movement that you might find in other areas, such as to the north of Mordor, in the Ravanian area, or in the plains around uh, Arthurdain, Cardolan, Angmar, because uh, it's quite broken ground. But uh, there can be some really good play to be had in working through best ways to get your recruitment patterns going, how to move them forward, how to make sure you hit the right targets and don't get intercepted. And that extra, that extra dimension of gameplay that comes in from all of the coast and uh, getting the right balance of warships and transports makes this really quite a special area of the map and one I've played in several times and I've always really enjoyed it. Anyway, I hope that's given you an, uh, an overview of the uh, Harandor and Umbar region of Middle-earth. I, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Do give a like below, give a little shout out below in the comments as well, and I hope you'll join me again for future videos. I'm signing off for now. Take care.